Uh, okay, topic uh, from me, right, for today's talk, and uh, thanks for having me, and that's a pleasure. So uh, we will talk about how uh, Chaos Mesh uh, facilitates and simplifies AI Ops platform adoption, right? Uh, which is pretty, I believe, uh, overcomplicated topic. So I decided to hide that, I mean, on the second slide and say that that will be a story about very first experience with Chaos Mesh. Uh, of course, we will talk about uh, AI ops uh, and the backstory behind that. Why we want to try something uh, from uh, AI ops. Uh, then I will describe our life before we actually discovered Cow Smash and probably how we invented our own Cow Smash uh, with uh, some tools. Right then, finally. Uh, we realized that and we will talk about how to live with control cows in your life probably if you're not familiar with the yeah, cows in your casual life we will talk about our um, of course uh, services and microservices right and then because uh, it's all about experiments right uh, i will share some results i mean how our uh, platform and our software actually uh, works and how we detect different issues uh, using, of course, uh, Cow Smash. And finally, some few outcomes and takeaways uh, from uh, me personally, right? So let's start. Uh, and of course, before uh, I want to seize this moment and share a few more words about me. So you already know that I'm Alex. I'm a senior cloud and uh, SRE uh, manager at Prudential. So I'm based in Singapore. So hello from the future. It's early morning in Singapore, and I believe for most of you, that's more like evening or night, right? So uh, for the last few years, especially, I, I focused on hyperscale uh, multi-cloud infrastructure and SRE. That's why you can see this SRE everywhere with my title. Uh, so uh, some story uh, behind me, right? So I uh, uh, was kind of uh, behind some virtualization tools. Maybe you're familiar with Parallels Desktop or OpenVZ, aka Virtuosa, right? I mean, uh, many uh, years back. So I worked in that company as software developer and senior software developer and uh, you know a lot of people from original uh, Linux kernel community, special networking. And to be honest, that's funny that when you use Cow Smash, right, especially different networking uh, experiments, right, under the hood, uh, Cow Smash will work with different tools like uh, Network Monitor or uh, Talking Ring Buffer or something like this. And such tools uh, with Linux kernel written by uh, my ex colleague. And I worked with that colleague. Unfortunately, that's not me, uh, but I'm still very proud about that. So. So each time when you uh, use Cow Smash, somehow uh, you can, uh, I mean, think about Alex if you want. <laughs> and a few more uh, random things, right? Uh, also, uh, I, I really in love with uh, Kubernetes and Cloud Native and uh, use Helm probably from day two or day three. So if you use Helm uh, and you use GCP, this is not an advertisement and you want to, uh, to host somehow your chart, you can use this tool. It's open source, very small service, Helm GCS. Uh, please support me. I need more motivation. GitHub, <laughs> Helm GCS, one more star. It will help me to continue maintain this tool and uh, uh, do more improvements and features. And finally, uh, the reason why I put this uh, slide, actually, I'm a fan. Of course, I'm a cyclist, but who cares, right? I mean, so uh, road cyclist, uh, pretty slow, by the way. Uh, and finally, I am a laptop uh, sticker lover, right? I mean, so that's why I put this slide. So I really love stickers. Sometimes I print uh, or even do a collaboration with different uh, kind of memes or maybe uh, fiction, let's say characters, especially uh, all over the internet. So if you want this sticker, please uh, contact me any channel, right? I mean, just find my Twitter, email, GitHub, and just uh, say hello and, uh, uh, say the keyword uh, cow smash so i will i have a lot of nice stickers like this for example i can distribute this hopefully sync post can uh, share sticker stickers all over the world so contact me uh keyword cow smash uh, after this meetings or any day any time right i mean feel free to do that and i will share your sticker if you have funny stickers you can share that with me so let's start 
Uh, so the backstory, right? Uh, you remember AI ops thing, right? Uh, and uh, cows mesh together. So obviously you need to know a little bit more, right? So, uh, uh, you know, one day we decided, what if we try something modern, something innovative, like AI, ML, uh, to, to reinforce and to improve our traditional uh, ops practices. Remember, uh, I'm in charge of SRE uh, at my place, right? So, and uh, yeah, we decided that we can do that. Probably we can even improve our MTTR, right? Mean time to repair characteristic and probably even uh, do a better troubleshooting. Uh, so we decided that's okay, we can try something new. Probably we have no idea about AI ML ops. And then we realized that that direction, right? That, that's called uh, AI ops. So we will use AI ops later, right? So, uh, and our input here. So we want to work with near production environments, our real systems, right? That we support uh, in company, right? And we also decided that should, that should, that should be a research, but that research, right? How to use AI ML ops to reinforce our ops practices must be kind of real. It should be with real data, relevant incidents from the past. And remember this key uh, thing, right? I mean, that we want to be really, really realistic, right? And use different uh, relevant incidents because that will be a key point for uh, kind of cow smash in, in our ecosystem. And finally, of course, our goal, I mean, just evaluate, just understand how different AI ML practices, tools, maybe even commercial tools, right? Can improve two or actually one concrete thing, incident detection, right? So we want to uh, do a better, uh, more precise incident detection against our near production environment for this experiment. So this is our story. Just, I mean, make a snapshot of that and let's go further, right? So a few words about AI ML ops. I know that this is obviously not a meeting for uh, AI ML ops. It's still overhyped, but we need to know a few things here, right? How, how, how this, I mean, system work, right? So you collect data from different sources that can be your logs or metrics or any, any useful information, uh, products and artifacts from your application, right? Your microservices in cloud, uh, on-prem, uh, in Kubernetes, whatever, right? Then you clean up this data. Obviously, you want to delete some secret data, sensitive data, and yeah, I know that can be boring, right? But still, we need to do a precification for that data. We need to, I don't know, create some structure, maybe still delete some uh, noise and so on and so forth. And then finally, we have uh, to categorize and do anomaly detection, right? So we bring all things together, pretty neat, clean data about our application uh, operations, right? And then we do uh, categorization and anomaly detection there. And finally, we can try to find the root cause, right, of the problem. Let's say some incident happened, or maybe it's happening for days, who knows, right? I mean, we're talking about different severity here. So we can say that just two uh, last uh, items, we can say that that can be managed by uh, ML power, right? I mean, by uh, real AI thing. So in a nutshell, right, we will talk about anomaly detection. And that was our primary goal. I mean, collect all logs, uh, call that AI uh, or ML ops, right? And do anomaly detection, some incident detection. And then finally, because we can say that this is anomaly, this is the problem or outage, right? We can do something like a root cause analysis because we have logs so we can combine them together and somehow probably find the, the reason, right? I mean, uh, and of course, probably solve that better than and to do I mean, faster troubleshooting. So, and that, that's the idea, right? So we can exploit different uh, deep learning techniques, right? I mean, and ML to solve both problems in this chain, in this pipeline. So this is our understanding, at least this is our context for this uh, uh, AI ops platform that we will uh, try and we will do uh, evaluation for this platform, right? So cool, uh, we have all components all together, right? So we have our platform, our service that can be your small uh, website or maybe our enterprise platform with actually hundreds of microservices talking to each other, right? So we use uh, cloud native environment, Kubernetes, uh, operators, and a lot of more, more or less kind of well-known things, right? For example, Kafka, uh, and other, I mean, well-established uh, enterprise services. 
uh, we expose our services to the internet, right, and mobile clients. So we use uh, Nginx in front of different entry points. And also, because we, uh, we are obsessed with managed uh, infrastructure, for example, managed clusters, right, Kubernetes, we also have different audit and activity logs from mostly cloud uh, platforms, right, that we use. So we decided to combine all things together. Remember the first uh, step in our AI uh, ops pipeline, right? And prettify this data. So probably we can say that we just uh, do this data more uh, more aligned, right? And then we upload this data into some, let's call magic uh, AI ML ops uh, platform that we for sure know it will detect incident, right? And then it will do a root cause analysis. So what's that incident detection? So we expect that you have a time uh, frame, right? You have a uh, timeline. So at, on that timeline, like on your YouTube video, right? You will find a particular time frame of the incident, right? Let's say you have incident at 5 p.m. or something. And then, because you know the date uh, or exact I mean, timestamp, right? You can uh, try to find root cause analysis. That, that's a pretty blurry term, right? I mean, we humans, we can, I mean, create multiple sentences in English. Some I see can do this in Arabic in our chat. Unfortunately, I can't. Uh, thanks, Google Translate, for that. But still, right? I mean, here we will use 10 most uh, valuable log lines, right? And then we will use some standard AI generated uh, generation for summary, right? So we will transform this 10 uh, lines into some sort of an English uh, looking sentence, right? So this is our idea. Uh, pretty straightforward, right? We, will, we specifically not focus on our platform and what algorithms we do there, because let's say in this situation, we are pretty uh, pretty okay with uh, with the understanding that that will try to find something, right? But uh, as you can see, we decided to make a few series. Initially, we we uh, called this also experiment, and this is funny because, right? I mean, this is this is a a, a great uh, let's say coincidence because uh, cow smash is the same term, and for us that was a just amazing thing, right? So we decided to to do a few experiments because uh, remember we have a a near production environment. So uh, it, in real life, it means that we use UAT environment uh, for our system. So we can generate some traffic there. We can even uh, put some users here, right? I mean, in, in, into our platform to generate logs to fuel, let's say, our AML system. And we decided to do a few experiments because we, we want to introduce some problems, right? Uh, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, our system is pretty stable when it's idle or when we have a normal standard uh, user actions, right? That's why we decided to provoke something there. And we call this managed outage, right? I mean, so we decided to introduce some ma managed outage uh, during the experiment, right? So, and our experiments, they were from three hours to two days. So we played with the legitimacy of uh, uh, log span and uh, exper experiment itself, right? So that, that's the idea. So we introduce managed outage right somewhere in our application. Uh, we at least believe that it's manageable, right? So we control this. At least we control the, the time, right? When we start and probably uh, resolve or recover uh, this outage. And then uh, we can somehow um, evaluate our AIML, right? So we can say, okay, we know the old data, please AIML say uh, something, right? Please say the truth. When was that uh, incident, right? Uh, and uh, what was the reason, right? So this is our framework. And let's look at uh, details, right? I mean, especially focus on how we uh, designed our outage scenario right here. So the idea that uh, we look at our past issues, right? I mean, especially uh, something something real. And I remember that before uh, we struggled with some DNS resolution in our cluster, that was pretty unstable for some uh, services, right? And we decided, what, okay, what if we would try to repeat something, let's say similar, right? I mean, to DNS uh, instability. So we can say that our DNS resolution is not available for all resources in clusters, in cluster. And of course, I mean, for all external resources that want to talk to cluster resources, right? Using that DNS. So, okay, because that's not a secret that we use a 
uh, managed Kubernetes, right, for our uh, platform and microservice, so we can somehow shut down, maybe shut down because that's easy, right? Core DNS. So the reality is a little bit more complicated because we have an auto scaler for our cover uh, DNS. That's why we quickly invented our own version of Chaos Mesh, right? That's called Chaos Mesh 000 nothing, and it's actually a bash script, right? So I believe that you, you can easily understand what's going on here, right? So we create an auto, uh, we actually scale down out auto scaler and we actually shut down core DNS for a moment. In this example, we use this magic sleep 10 seconds, right? And then what's the most important, right? We recover uh, our service, right? Because we want to stop the, the auto, right? Because we want to recover that. And, and for that, we need to write some additional commands. It's pretty trivial here, right? I mean, we just need to restore the value. Uh, thanks for a declarative uh, manifest, right? That we can apply on top of uh, Kubernetes, right? So we can say replica, replicas one, for example, and uh, finally restore the original core DNS replica five, just to speed up the process of uh, recovery. And, uh, yeah, let's look at the results, right? So remember all this, I mean, uh, fancy uh, system that we have, right? So uh, duration of experiment, about seven hours, right? So we decided to uh, capture a little bit more logs, right? I mean, before and after the uh, managed audit, right? Then we also uh, emulated or added some user uh, load, right? So we added uh, some user registration on top of our system on UAT. So we tried to play this near production, near real life traffic, right? And uh, we did this pretty simple uh, experiment, right? So we decided to uh, make a 10 sec global DNS failure. So with that uh, core DNS service shut down. And uh, this is how uh, we can visualize this, right? This is a simulation, right? So time frame, we have users, uh, they kind of uh, go in and out. So, right, we have probably, I mean, from five to 10 RPS requests per second, uh, right? And somewhere, I mean, surprisingly near the end of the experiment, we have one small outage, right? I mean, so for 10 seconds, shut down the whole cluster for the all microservice infrastructure. Of course, uh, no surprises, our AI, AML uh, platform detected this problem. So we can say, yes, detected. And this is how it looks in our AI ML system, right? So a few uh, agenda things here, right? I mean, so uh, our kind of map agenda right here. So dots actually are in different incidents, potential incidents, so detected anomalies, right? And one of that dot, uh, this last one, it's actually our incident. So we quickly uh, went through all incident tra traversed and find and find that one last incident was our DNS shutdown. Uh, I will not go into details, but uh, for sure our uh, root cause analysis, let's say log lines, pretty clear about results, right? You can find that some service uh, was, I mean, shut down, right? I mean, and we have more and more kind of DNS resolution problems than 10 plus something seconds and we recovered, right? <laughs> the biggest surprise, I mean, the biggest surprise actually was all those dots, right? That we, that, that, that we got, right? I mean, during the execution. So we discovered many other, maybe minor, but still things, right? I mean, about our platform and our logs. Uh, but I mean that was that was pretty pretty easy and and we we decided we, we should go next right that was just uh, just nothing right and this is actually uh, where we want to uh, add some chaos right I mean because obviously we cannot say that our scenario is chaotic right I mean it's extremely determinated right but meanwhile uh, we quickly realized that if you put just a random chaos, right? Uh, uh, it's a nightmare, right? So that's why we we focused on something that we call controlled chaos, right? Or, or s let's say deterministic chaos, right? And uh, thanks uh, searching engines, right? And Google, we, we, we quickly found a chaos smash. That was back in November, December, I believe last year, right? Uh, that crazy 20, 2021 so and yeah we decided okay it seems that it's absolutely something that 
fits all our needs, right? I mean, so and let's look what we what we uh, designed with Chaos Mesh, right? So Chaos Mesh, right? Okay, first thing that we did, we decided to replace our very uh, let's say uh, straightforward script, Bash script, right, with a, a new experiment called uh, uh, DNS, right? It's a DNS section uh, built in. Uh, with kind pod chaos, right? So when we decided to uh, use pod failure with the same uh, duration. So, I mean, if if you look at the details, of course, you will find some differences, right? I mean, how that works, but uh, still see, we, we don't need to work with the, uh, uh, with the auto uh, scheduler or mm, manage it directly, right? So we decided to target our DNS pod a deletion uh, right directly to our uh, core D, uh, core uh, DNS right. I mean uh, ports. Uh, so that that's fully replaced our initial uh, statement, and that, that that was fine because we still decided to keep the same let's say idea, the same problem. Remember our very old and ex bad experience, right? A negative experience with um, a resolution, DNS resolution in the past, the real audit that, audit that we had there. So we decided that that will be a key event for us, right? But meanwhile, remember control chaos. Let's add some control chaos, right? So uh, still DNS, it's a good source for chaos for us. And we decided to add uh, just random DNS chaos here. Uh, from the DNS, uh, let's say, uh, plugin or section, right, of um, Chaos Mesh. So we use uh, asterisk pattern, which means that we apply this chaos to all hosts that we want to re resolve, right? And because we're talking about uh, A records, right, and we typically use A records. I mean, this is, this is nice, right? So we decided that we can put a uh, dynamic or different, let's say, fixed percentage of that chaos, right? So we can apply that to somehow 20 to uh, close to 100%, uh, right? I mean, but that was not enough for us. So we decided more chaos will be obviously nice. So we decided to add a little bit more network chaos because the network chaos looks really amazing. So we decided, okay, let's, let's add some corruption for network, uh, and also let's keep this uh, thing very dynamic. Uh, so pretty the same uh, percentage, right, I mean. And uh, finally, uh, we have something which is called workflow, right, I mean, in Chaos. Uh, remember our script. Our script was pretty straightforward, right? It's a linear, it's imperative, so uh, you define the action, the next line, next action, then you have sleep, and then you have a recovery. So here you obviously have more freedom, uh, more flexibility, and you can script more sophisticated scenario. And we did that uh, scripting. So we decided to use all together, let's say parallel and just steps with a deadline, which is literally for us a uh, duration. And we uh, modeled this uh, scenario, right? I mean, this play, we call this play, right? I mean, the one experiment, the whole play. So we decided to add roughly seven different blocks of uh, uh, let's say for steps, right? I mean, uh, from one to seven. And for each of them, it will be a different uh, fixed percentage of chaos, right? So you can literally see how chaotic things uh, in our, uh, in each of our step or block. So number five, obviously our winner, it's around 90% here. So, and we more or less have, I mean, some, something from yellow to, I mean, greenish thing, right? Uh, and of course, we mixed all together uh, chaos number two and chaos number three, right? I mean, in all of them, right? So uh, with the same with the same proportion, and only for this particular three uh, one by one events, we enabled uh, DNS for deletion, right? So uh, this is our let's say ethylon mark. So we decided that this chaos, which is actually a real outage will be our main uh, main clue, maybe main criteria to uh, let's say evaluate our AI ops system, right? So, and let me show you what, what's happened, right? I mean, the result of that, uh, yeah. So we have, I mean, ju just a one small hint, right? I mean, especially for me. So we combine them, right? Using templates and we use that in parallel. Thanks Chaos Mesh for this very nice uh, uh, workflow 
I mean, functionality, you don't need to use bash or maybe combine that. That's in, in background somewhere externally, right? So you can literally script that as the CRD, right? And push that manifest. And uh, yeah, then, then you just do a scheduler uh, that you saw already in the previous presentation. You can literally say at this moment, using sort of a cron, right? I mean, uh, style uh, definition, please add this crazy atomic bomb, right? I mean, you play a nuke here. And uh, this is the result. So we call this experiment perfect storm, right? I mean, because that's obviously perfect storm. You have chaos all the way. So we did a pretty short, uh, let's say, uh, experiment duration due to a few things, right? Of course, that's a volume of our logs, right? I mean, just imagine your, your website or your service, right? Uh, that's struggling with the different issues. You will see tons of logs there, right? I mean, literally gigs of logs there. And we also increased uh, the, ampl uh, we amplified our load, um, uh, let's say input for users, right? Instead of up to 10, we decided to go to 25 RPS, still with the same profile. So we do a re user registration. We do a social login. This is sort of when you log in using SSO for us uh, and different, I mean, routine things like profile updates and so on and so forth. Talking refresh, and we did that using our GMeta uh, testing, uh, let's say, tool set, internal tool set, right? We just, just tuned that. And finally, uh, we did uh, three uh, one by one, uh, uh, I would call this uh, atomic or nuclear nukes, right? I mean, uh, with the full uh, DNS port uh, failure, right? I mean, it literally just shut down uh, or set your port in failure state. And I use this term situation. This is our internal term. So you can literally think how, how chaotic things, right? Uh, uh, on each, let's say, step, right? So remember this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, it's our sort of situation term here. So we can see the profile. So we still do this visualization, right? This is an emulation of things that we want to see in our AI ops uh, uh, platform, right? So we see users, different blocks here. Uh, and uh, three nukes, right? I mean, three uh, strikes right here. And user. So yeah, uh, let's talk about the results. Obviously, you see the teaser or spoiler. So we detected using our and uh, this is the this is the final picture, right? I mean, that we that we see in our uh, platform, right? Our AI platform. So. Obviously, I tried to use the scale, but that's not so precise that you think so. But uh, surprisingly, uh, we can uh, somehow uh, overlay our steps, right? I mean, here, and the most, I mean, detected anomalous will be in this section when we do a pretty, pretty high saturation, right? Percentage of chaos. The next thing, right, remember our uh, kind of next section with three nukes. And uh, when we traverse them, we also detected and we find all three, uh, let's say DNS shut down, right? I mean, remember each dot, it's sort of a uh, standalone incident with its own RCA and uh, log, let's say uh, subset, right? Up to 10 logs. Uh, so uh, for one of that incident, that was, it seems a very blurred, let's say, picture. So before the start time and end time for first and second DNS shutdown were pretty precise. I mean, so literally the same time frame. And for last one, that was not exactly right. It's also added some additional chaos, it seems, or maybe it took a little bit more time. That's why we decided to say that only two uh, uh, out of three, let's say, managed issues were detected there. And one uh, was with some chaos events. Uh, so, and for us, that was a sort of a very interesting kind of um, uh, finding, right? That the system itself, uh, it, it, it actually worked on the incidents and anomalies rather than just our uh, generic nukes. And th that's why we see so many different issues here, right? When we do a lot of chaos events and we have a really random and uh, sometimes pretty, uh, pretty niche, let's say problems, right? It's especially not related to our application, right? Uh, from, I mean, from third party or, or low level errors, but still it 
it, the, 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 the really nice thing that it literally copy the, the, our experiment, right? Remember this simulation that we did before, right? Sorry. Uh, so this, this picture. And when you open uh, our AI platform uh, uh, observations, right? You will see more or less the same, the same idea, right? So you have C uh, users, right? And meanwhile, a huge chaos here. And you obviously have a lot of chaos events and you have a very limited number here, right? I mean. So because chaos is not so high, it's probably, I don't know scientifically how to describe that, but probably 20, 30% of chaos, it's still normal. But I mean, this huge level of saturation, it's, it's extremely uh, I mean, visible on the picture. Uh, so that, that was our experiment. And obviously we did more than two uh, experiments, right? They are just two very interesting, right? So we have more and we explore uh, more different uh, experiments from Chaos Mash, and we even have an appetite, I mean, to write our own specific experiments, right, for, for us, right? I mean, especially to change something in our application behavior and uh, play more uh, in that on that scene rather than, I mean, just a networking or DNS uh, nukes. So some outcomes, right? I mean, from uh, from me. So remember that that was a pretty, pretty, pretty first, very first experience with Cal Smash, right? We just realized that we need some tool. Uh, we did a small research and we quickly find the solution, right? Last November, that was a that was a, I believe, a two point X release, which is really nice. I mean, of Cal Smash. So that will will be our very first impression, right? For for this outcomes. So Cal Smash, I believe that we use 2.1 version, uh, maybe 1.1. It's really powerful, and I mean, I believe uh, simple, simple to use platform because we spent literally, I mean, just a few hours, I mean, to set up uh, the platform. And the nice thing that you have a dashboard. So if you if you don't have time or you don't want to uh, play with the CLI, right, or you want to share some results, or maybe share the Pro process with somebody, right? You can share the dashboard and uh, do UI, UI things there. So great out of the box, especially network uh, cows and pod experiments. I believe they are pretty straightforward, but enough, I mean, to create a very generic thing. So remember our first experience with Bash, you can literally replace all your, I believe, Bash-based uh, straightforward experiments and controlled outages with that. So. Flexible workflows, uh, that was a, also a surprise for me because I expected to write something with, for example, continuous delivery tool, maybe Argo, just to control uh, our uh, manifests, right? That we, uh, that we fulfill with them, we fulfill uh, our cluster. But you can script and automate all things with uh, workflows, right? Right from a uh, cow smash. Uh, I didn't mention, but of course, uh, our, some of our application written uh, with uh, or in Java, right? And uh, that was a very, very big, I mean, advan advantage for us. I mean, that you can uh, do uh, some, maybe still pretty straightforward, but GPM uh, experiments, right? So you can introduce an error in your, uh, inject an error in your uh, GVM service. And especially nice thing here that you don't need to have a source code. You, you don't need to compile or build your image or whatever. You, you can literally, I mean, uh, do a um, sort of injection, right? I mean, for that, you just need to know the class, the function maybe, and you can emulate your uh, kind of Java application script, uh, application audit, right? For example, we did that for our uh, token exchange uh, function, right? When you exchange your credentials to a token, we introduced an error there, so we played that a lot. And uh, I believe that the documentation and the mechanism itself, right, with the, it's, by the way, Byteman under the hood, right? I mean, that, that's, a, uh, I believe, JBoss or something um, process how to inject things. It was, I believe, renovated and updated for last version, and uh, it works as, as charm, right? I mean, nothing, nothing, uh, uh, nothing you need to do, right? I mean, just define, follow the instruction. A uh, few kind of maybe things that you should note, right? I mean, so for customized clusters, and we, we extremely customize our production and not only production clusters, right? Managed clusters. It might be some uh, kind of some complications with uh, installation, right? So you probably need to know a little bit more about Chaos Mesh setup and your own infrastructure. In our case, we use 
uh, Azure AKS, right? I mean, and uh, for example, we have a very custom core DNS configuration. And for DNS, the special experiments, you just need to make sure that the configuration of uh, core DNS of your cow smash is actually aligned with your uh, AKS or your own customization. Uh, as I see, uh, it's still ongoing thread with different support, but uh, at least for AKS, you definitely with Calico CNI that we use core DNS, you can set up cow smash and that will work for your network DNS experiments. So, but just uh, read Q and A or FAQ, I mean, on cow smash website. Uh, and finally, maybe that's just, I mean, my, uh, something that I want to see, right? As I mentioned, we have an appetite to have, to write our own experience. Even maybe we can open source and uh, uh, make them public, right? But still we are pretty targeted to make their own or our own experiments. Uh, but meanwhile, uh, you can do that right now and uh, you can study the, the page, right? I mean, about the developer guide and I, but I want to see maybe more details, maybe more examples, ideally how to write them, maybe to have a, a little bit more broader audience, right? Who can do that? Who can write their own custom experience like we uh, do internally? That can be sort of maybe even SDK. Uh, it can maybe even enable a third party, let's say language bash or Python, maybe not only Golang, but that's more like something that we want to have, nice to have. So overall, I uh, treat our experience as the very, very interesting and uh, actually simple to use, which is a pretty uh, surprising thing because Cow Smash and Kubernetes and overall, it's a pretty complicated and a very sophisticated uh, topic, right? But uh, there are a lot of objects, there are a lot of mechanics under the hood, right? Tools that you need to use to create uh, chaos and especially to recover your system after chaos. Because for us, that was the crucial part, right? So we, we know a million ways of doing chaos on our environment, thanks developers and DevOps, right? I mean, as we engineers, but the problem, how to restore that, that uh, system status. And with chaos smash, for sure, you can do that because that's out of the box, that's in design, right? Um, by design of this uh, service and this platform. So this is our experience, thank you.